Okay, so I think at this stage, I'd like to uh, summarize where we stand. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have a chance to talk more about diagnostic research and grading of evidence, and perhaps also some better interpretation of findings of uh, studies of different kinds. So let's see where we are at the moment. We've talked about how questions can be framed. We've talked about how literature searches can be constructed from the question. We have talked about how from the question, we can determine what kind of data we need to extract, both concerning the numbers of patients in different exposure groups with different outcomes, but also concerning the quality of the study according to our research question and its design and important quality features of the design. And then with all of these data extracted, we are able to construct tables that describe the studies, that describe the features of the studies, that describe the quality of the studies, that even describe the results of the studies. And we can even construct figures from these data. So tomorrow we will talk about study synthesis using these extracted data. And in the process of discovering what is necessary for data extraction, I have given you details of how to extract, construct data extraction ideas uh, using example of a randomized control trial. So from what I have described, you should also be able to imagine for yourself how a randomized trial could be planned and executed. Uh, because if you can plan and execute a randomized control trial, you would also know how to extract data from a randomized control trial. So I'm going to stop here and leave the last 15 minutes for comments, questions. Any need for me to go over anything I have presented today and yesterday to clarify any, any, any points that need clarification. Well, I am waiting, and you have time to think about what I have said. Uh, I am very happy for you to think about your own question and how if you were constructing a systematic review in your topic, how would you extract it? Uh, think about that. and. Ask me questions about the while you think about that. Why don't I make myself very quickly a cup of tea? Please stay and I'll be back in about 90 seconds. That's all it will take me to make myself a cup of tea.
All right, I'm back. Uh, let's see if there are any comments made. How long does the how long does systematic yeah, review usually sorry. take? Uh, there's a question by Marija. Maria, the, it depends almost entirely so on how many studies think. there are in a systematic review. For Mr. Zutri, for Mr. Zutri, obviously, if you read that, I predict that we will have 15 to 18 months. Six, if we are going to have a group of 90 students. Is, uh, is this direct? Is is this is this uh, is this commentary directed to me? Can somebody explain what is being said? Gaber was speaking. Gaber, can you? Ah, you're just laughing because you're listening to what he said. All right. Well, I hope whatever has been said is. Not impolite. Uh, okay, well, Ma Maria, your question, it depends entirely on uh, the topic. I have been in systematic reviews that have been completed and submitted within three months. Uh, but no, no, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. I, I don't have any problem. And uh, that, that the microphone wasn't switched off. Uh, but. But, but uh, I have also been involved in systematic review projects that have, that have taken two or three years. Now, you probably also know that the process of getting from submitted to publication can take several months. So if you're looking at from the time of designing your question to getting published, this could be definitely longer than two or three months, but completing a review can happen within two or three months. And any more questions or uh, comments? May, may I ask you, how many of you expect to write a background chapter for your thesis that up until now you hadn't thought about writing it based on a systematic review? Would you like to make a comment about that? Everyone's quiet. Well, yes, definitely. That's why I am. I mentioned this point yesterday, but I think I want to emphasize this again today. Your background chapter, my experiences, takes a lot of effort to write. But why not include within the background chapter a systematic review and submit it as a publication? The effort you make will be converted into a paper and you will have an additional paper. It will even be published before you go for your VIVA exam for the thesis. So you will enter your VIVA examination with confidence that you already have a paper published on the topic that you are studying. Polona, what do you think? 
Well, uh, it's a, of course a good proposition, but uh, the time that we have, like uh, a month or two, to prepare the systematic review uh, on a topic, uh, I think it's you know to make a scheme or something, but not to make a proper systematic review. Or why wouldn't you want to make a proper systematic review? If my time is limited. Let me put to you. If your time is limited and you do something haphazard, I mean that's not going to be that's not going to give you any advantage. When the time is limited, is it is even more important to be systematic. The only person who can afford to be haphazard is the one who has lots of time. People who don't have time need to be extremely systematic. Agree. The pe only people who can afford to waste money are the ones who have a lot of money. People who don't have money have to be extremely careful about how they use their limited amount of money. The same applies to people who have limited time. Um, um, Maria, what is your comment? Uh, Maria, you're wanting to say something. Tell me. I'm sorry, it's still me, Polona. Ah, Polona, go ahead. Uh, and uh, if we find out that there is no systematic review on the topic that we are researching, then this is our first systematic review. Well, that, then it will have an even more fantastic chance of getting public in a, in a journal. Yay. And okay. next day, if you do a review and you find very few studies, then describe your methods of searching and, uh, and and whatever you found with table one and the appendix that I described. And all of that can be described in your background chapter. And this will make a fantastic background for the justification of your thesis work. Okay. Well, when you say, uh, Maria, you say we can publish it later. What do you mean by later? You mean after your viva? Maria? Well, Maria hasn't come back. So uh, Maria's question appears to be, if you do a systematic review, an exercise for my thesis, I can publish it later. Of course, you can publish it. But later is not the right word. You need to publish it immediately. You should have your systematic review published before you enter the room to give your Viva presentation. Uh, a, 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 any other colleague who has comment or question? I also wonder if Matej is back on the... Yeah. Matej, are you back? Jaka, what, what does that mean? J Jaka, you said something? Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, no problem. All right. So let me just give you, uh, we need to write a systematic review. So you are, Jaka, are you saying that you are, you are convinced that that's a good idea? Would you like to unmute your mic and say something? Okay, so no problem. 
Right. So I'll just give you a brief uh, comment concerning tomorrow. Uh, Tiva, you have a question. What if published study doesn't contain enough information to determine bias? Should we exclude their study from our review? Right. Uh, that's a good point. Um, Jack also makes a comment that it's a daunting task to think about doing a systematic review. Jack, you are going to be making a big effort to write that background chapter. That background chapter will become so much easier to write if you have done a systematic review to prepare yourself for that chapter. It may look daunting, but it is just those few steps that I described to you in the last four hours. It's nothing more than that. And the question from Tiva about whether if the study is too biased, can I throw it out? Well, it depends on the circumstances. I generally prefer that it is better to describe the weaknesses of the study, including the fact that it does not have enough information to determine its weaknesses, than to just throw it out. So I guess my answer is, depending on the circumstances, it would be preferable to include such a study and report that it does not provide information to determine bias. Okay, thank you for your question, Tiva. Right, so the plan for tomorrow would be, we will look at how statistical synthesis or synthesis can be carried out using the data. And I would also like to spend a little bit of time about diagnostic research. I noticed men, at least a couple of your topics described today were diagnostic or prognostic in nature. So what we discuss tomorrow concerning diagnostic research to those colleagues whose thesis topics are concerning diagnosis. I may also mention a few words about how to evaluate quality of diagnostic studies. So hopefully that will also be useful to write the background chapter of those theses that include evaluation of or development of diagnostic tests. So with this, I bring <clears throat> today's session to close. Uh, unless there is any last minute comments, um, we, we come to the end. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.